Hello, it's Dr. Jay McCartney here with another Psychology of Crime video. And in this episode, I wanted to look at the UK child killer, Mick Philpot. Now, ultimately, he was convicted of manslaughter, so we can't call him a murderer, but he was responsible, along with two others, technically, of the death of six of his own children. And this would happen in 2012 in the UK. Before I get into the video, if I could ask you to please like and subscribe and comment below and feel free to, you know, have a dialogue. I'm interested to hear what people have to say about this case. It's a dreadful case and it's really well known in the UK, perhaps not so much outside of the UK. So I'd be interested to, to know what people overseas have to say. So Mick Philpot, 2012, he would kill six of his children. He had 17 children. That were known. It, I have read somewhere that it is suspected that he had up to 22 children. And he relished in that. He would often appear in the UK media on chat shows, um, kind of demanding that he had bigger houses, more benefits. He never worked, I don't think, a day in his life. But he would have multiple children with multiple women. And he always had the same type of woman that he would go for. He would go for very young women. He would go for vulnerable women. He would go for women that already had children and previous bad relationships. Initially, he would be quite persuasive and charming and attentive to these various women. But that would be very short lived. And then that would be replaced by control and manipulation and dominance. And often he would have these women become pregnant quite quickly. They were young. He would get together with, um, just as I'll give you an example, he was 45 years old when he got together with a lady called Lisa Willis, who was 16 and already had a child. Now, she was just his archetypal prime candidate she didn't have any support and she didn't potentially have anywhere to live or she had limited options and he was offering her a home this would come with the condition that she was moving in as his mistress as he would call her with his wife Maraid, who was only a couple of years older than Lisa Willis when he met her she was 19 and he was 44 when she had met and she'd come from a previously vulnerable background. And again, the Philpots of this world, they just scour. They scour their local area for young, for naive, for vulnerable women who just don't have either the support or the experience of life to tell the likes of him to get lost and they're not interested. So he would spend a lot of his time looking for these type of women to be able to get into relationships with, to become uh, in, entrenched with very quickly by having children with them. Now, if we go back a little bit, he was convicted and he served a, a jail sentence for violence towards one of his former girlfriends, Kim Hills. He stabbed her. He apparently at one point he shot her with a crossbow because she displeased him by wearing a dress that was too short. And this is archetypal of the likes of Mick Philpott. They are paranoid. They are exceptionally thin skinned. But all the time they think and he's got a, 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 a complete and utter history of women that just get fed up with the, the violence, the abuse the controlling from him and they leave him so of course he's paranoid all the time that that's what's going to happen and this was the crux of what happened when six of his children unfortunately met their deaths because so you have a, a large family social housing with himself as sort of like the emperor as he would have thought he would have been numerous children I think there was something like eight children between them uh, between the two ladies, Maraid and Lisa, living at the house. And he had, remember, he had numerous children from previous relationships as well. Uh, there was a caravan, apparently, in the driveway where that's where he would call one or other of the, the women in to have sex with them. And it, he relished in this. He relished in his reputation of being this stud, I suppose, in his his fantasy head that he was thinking he was. But what had happened was Lisa Willis had just got fed up of the situation and she was going to take 
her four children with her. Now, if we look at his thoughts, and remember, this is just me speculating about what he was thinking. I've not had any interviews with him or done any diagnosis with him, but I've just seen a lot of footage and read a lot of research about him. So if we think about, um, and so she had left, Lisa Willis had left, and he was enraged by that because she was taking the children, which children to him were just an extension of him for a start, but also they were an income. They were an income. They were benefit babies. They were children for cash, whatever you, you, you care to call it. And by taking four of them, that was literally halving his income that he believed he was completely entitled to. So there was a court case that was just about to happen where he was going to fight for custody of these children. Now, in his delusion, he thought that he may have got these children back, but Lisa was a very good mum. And with his reputation, his past conviction, it was highly unlikely that he was going to be awarded any type of custody of these children. But to him, his thoughts at, at that would have been, how dare you? How dare you even consider leaving? Now you've left. How dare you even consider keeping my children from me? They're my legacy. They're part of me. And you're taking them away from him. And his... Is narcissism, because he's he's previously been diagnosed as being a psychopathic narcissist with antisocial behaviour traits, of course, would have just been at its greatest. He would have been enraged that somebody would have stood up for him. And remember, she's kind of in a list of a long line of women that would have just got fed up with his controlling and his dominance and his belittling and all the things that he would have subjected every single woman in his life to because he saw women as possessions nothing more than possessions and apparently there was a situation with one of his um, ex-partners where he beat her because he had had two young boys with her who he encouraged to be violent towards her whether they were or not I don't know but apparently he would encourage them to be violent towards her but his displeasure uh, of her not having a, a girl legacy because he's had a few boys he's had one or two girls and now it's time to have another girl and because she didn't provide that to him he was violent towards her and she got fed up with that and left so there's this long line of women that taken in as young vulnerable young girls he of course then they have a very quick growing up living with this older dominating narcissistic man and then they leave so he was enraged at this happening again that Lisa was going to leave and take his children but more importantly take his money and take his income so those were the thoughts about the, the court case so when he was planning the fire now he planned it with Maraid his his lawful wife and um, an associate called Paul Mosley now, again, his thoughts about that would have been he was manipulating. He was manipulating the pair of them. And apparently there was something about that Maraid would have sex or some kind of sexual encounter with Paul Mosley as some kind of payment towards him being part of Mick Philpott's plan. So, again, he's, he's thinking he's the great puppet master here and he's controlling all the situation. And he would be manipulating both Maraid and Mosley but he would have been thinking all the, but his motivation for that all the time would have been you're going to pay Lisa Willis you've left me and you represent all those women that have left me and taken my children and you're going to pay I'm going to frame you because that's what the plan was I'm going to frame you for the fire the fire was never intended to kill the children, but it was just obviously meant to get them a new house or get them noticed even more so he could have kind of done his poor me act, but frame her at the same time. So therefore, if she's framed for some kind of arson attack, then in his twisted mind, he would have been getting the children back and remember the children equal money. He wouldn't have cared for them. He wouldn't have looked after them. That would have been left down to Maraid. But it was him and it was motivated completely by this how absolutely dare you even question me and even think about taking my children away. So that would have been his main motivator for that. And if we come on to the fire itself, 
um, he would have been justifying that. Again, he would have been thinking that he was controlling the situation and he would have been justifying it. And when Maraid may have been saying, look, you know, my sleeping children are in there. Please don't set fire to the house because they may not get out. He would have been completely dismissive of that. He would have been telling her, well, you're in now and I'm going to happily throw you under the bus if anything does go wrong. So you better do as I, I want. And that was his MO throughout his entire life. He would just bully people into things. And remember, if you're vulnerable, if you're worn down by years of abuse and dismissiveness from a character like him, which obviously these people anybody around him would have had to have put up with then it was easy to get people to do what you wanted and it was interesting that when she tried to do an appeal about her sentence that was the crux of the appeal that she was under the domination of this character Mick Philpot. but that was thrown out it was considered that actually she could have said no or she could have gone to the authorities at any time but chose not to so she actually had to serve her whole sentence of for, for manslaughter because that's what they were convicted of eventually and the last thing I want to just briefly touch on is some really famous footage and please google it um, and it'll be on YouTube as well of the press conferences that he would give and if ever there was anybody I, I'm not even going to use the term crocodile tears because he couldn't manufacture tears he was just looking all the time to see if the cameras were on him because he was an exhibitionist. He loved the attention. Remember I said he'd been on lots of television programs talking about his situation and how marvellous he was. And he just absolutely adored all the attention from the media. So if we've got this tragedy of six children dying and apparently the local community thinking that it was a, a, a fire to begin with, a, a tragic accident fire, rallied around and there was a fund set up for these poor children's funeral costs and he kind of suckered everybody in and those would have been his thoughts at the time he would have thought genuinely that I've got this I'm completely utterly in control of the situation nobody knows nobody has got the faintest idea that I have anything to do with this they're all believing the story that it was an arson attack it was an arson attack by the woman that had dared to leave him that he was trying to frame and he was completely innocent of it and getting away with it because that's all he thought but also making sure that the world's media or the country's media were looking at him and seeing him as a sympathetic and sad and sorrowful figure, whereas he was anything but. He was enjoying the attention. And that's really kind of what highlighted, you know, the police had their suspicions, of course, right from the start, but that's what highlighted the situation with the police. And they would put them up in, in a hotel room and they bugged the hotel room to get enough evidence to be able to put the accusations towards him, which, of course... They, they all denied, but were ultimately found guilty of the manslaughter of these six young children, ages 5 to 15. And it's a really tragic case. It's an absolute tragic case because these poor children had to die just for the ego of their dreadful, neglectful, couldn't care less about you father. But they had to die because that's what he basically didn't care whether it happened or not because he had to repair his broken ego because yet another woman had stood up to him and left him. So those are my thoughts about the thoughts of Mick Philpot at the times that he, he killed his children. And again, if I could please ask you to like, comment and subscribe, that'd be absolutely great. And I'll be along with another Psychology of Crime video shortly. And until then, thanks ever so much and bye.